Hi everyone and welcome back to Candid Campbell. I'm your host Olivia Hopp and we are lucky enough to be joined again by the very busy and very hardworking Dean Campbell. So how are you today? Very good, very good. You don't need to uh, gain extra points by saying such nice things. <laughs> <laughs> well please. So let's jump right into the, sh into the show. Um, the one topic that no one can forget is the big blizzard that we just had this weekend. I mean schools were closed down, businesses were closed down. And somehow Ryder, after it all, just was able to reopen the day after, which is very impressive. Yeah. Um, I mean, after a blizzard like that and a power outage, I, how vital is, is cleaning up the campus and how yeah. do you get it done so quickly? We, we have an amazing facility staff and, uh, and all of the credit goes to them for cleaning up. Uh, they came in when the first snow started falling on Tuesday night mm. and they stayed here uh, round the clock Wow. Scraping and doing even the points where I, where from my house I could not see the Bart Ludicky Center. Uh, <laughs> it was coming down so hard. They were here and just working and working. And then, you know, not only the snow removal, but it was complicated by the mm -hmm. trees that were falling down too, yeah. the tree limbs. So they they did a yeoman job. They deserve all the credit. They're the Aww. heroes. Uh, them and the and the the f public safety who really helped keep the students safe as well. Uh, they did an awful lot to, to help mm -hmm. keep the roads safe, keep everybody safe, and. And I want to thank the students for not getting on the roads and allowing the, the, the facility staff to actually have the room to, to do the plowing that mm -hmm. they needed to do. It was an amazing amount of snow. Oh, that was a, I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful myself for not having to do any shoveling, yeah. so. Well, the, the, the only bad part about the whole thing is that the those of you who park on campus have to dig out. Oh, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> Which is always a. A task, but you can get a shovel from public safety and facilities, and oh, I didn't they'll know that. help that's you out. Oh, that, that's a mm -hmm. nice tool. Um, so, what exactly happened with the power outage? The power outage didn't happen on this campus alone. It was okay. something that happened outside of campus, uh, and around us there were about 500 homes that were without power. Oh, wow. Um, we're lucky in that you know we have some some generators that help us with essential services. Mm -hmm. In the res in each residence hall is a gas. They're, they're uh, gas generators that, that come on when the power goes off. Uh, and that keeps on the heat, uh, some emergency oh lights, <laughs> uh, and, and helps the fire, keeps the fire alarm system going. So they came on, and one of the emergency lights, and, and our RAs and staff was trained. They're trained to, with extra flashlights to help mm -hmm. out a little bit. Um, yeah, it only lasted an hour, which was good, but yeah. we've had it last a little bit longer, so we were pleased. Luckily, most of the lines on campus are underground, so mm -hmm. the trees don't affect it that much. Oh, that's good. I know I've seen a lot of branches that have fallen because of the snow. Mm -hmm. um, how how did things like that affect? I mean, the danger on campus as far as yeah. you know, falling branches or. Well, s during the middle of the snowstorm, I, I had I asked the RAs and the RDs to put out an alert for the students mm -hmm. to not walk under trees because yeah. as heavy as the snow was, uh, branches were falling everywhere and. You know, students, if they're not thinking and they're not mindful of it, could get hurt because um, mm -hmm. you don't know where, which branch is going to fall. Oh, on definitely, yeah. So we did put out the alert, and again, the students were very mindful of, of that and been very good. The, snow, the students did have a lot of fun with the snow. Yeah. There was a, some, a, I, I remember, I think it was the ultimate Frisbee team where somebody mm -hmm. out there playing Frisbee on the <laughs> field in the middle of the blizzard. Uh, we had people playing football yeah. and, da and having fun, and so the students seemed to have a lot of fun safely in the snow as well. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And also the campus looks beautiful when it's covered in snow. I do have to say that. It looks beautiful. I feel like I'm in a calendar. It's oh, very, very really pretty. pretty. Um, so I know that earlier this semester there was a bit of an issue with crowded classes. Are there anything about um, any new academic buildings or anything that well, may, may be in the works? Well, you know that we are, we, we did some reorganizing of classes mm -hmm. and class times and how we assign classes in order to create more space uh, for the students in the classes. Um, we had to reduce some size classes for the fire code and mm -hmm. work on that. We do have some plans for additional classroom building. We are working right now and planning for a new academic building that will be built um, near Memorial Hall, on the grassy area near Memorial Hall. Okay. Um, the academic building will have classrooms and faculty offices and it will have a, some, meet some large meeting spaces. It's going to be a very, very nice classroom. We don't know exactly which departments are going mm -hmm. there at this point, um, but the plans are there for it, um, and we're hoping to have it done. We're, we're doing a lot of fundraising, and all the, the fundraising for it, and it's going along very, very well. So we'll see. Hopefully in, in a couple of years, we'll start breaking down on that. Oh, good. I hope I'm still here for that. That, that seems so nice. Be. Oh, good. <laughs> well, speaking of construction, I know the theater in the BLC is getting quite a big facelift. So how did that come about? Well, 
when we moved music theater uh, from the Westminster Princeton campus mm -hmm. to, to this campus, we needed another theater to support the program. Um, we at one time thought with the new academic building we would incorporate a new theater into that, but it was more cost effective to redo the Bart Ludicky Center Theater um, to be able to enhance that program. Now, it's going to be a great theater. We're not going to add any seats. This, it's all going to come to the back. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to add you know, ability for dressing rooms, obviously. Um, there's going to be a place to do set construction. Uh, the sets will be able to fly in you know, like the regular major oh, wow. theater can do. On the lower level, because you know the Bart Ludicky Center at that point s slopes down, the mm -hmm. ground slopes down, there'll be a, a uh, experimental theater and there'll be a dance studio for dance classes oh, down wow. there. So it's going to be a really remarkable structure. We're going to break ground on that this summer here and work there. We're also planning another academic building on the Westminster campus. Oh, really? Well. So to support them, with that'll have rehearsal space and, and places for them to, to sing in their choirs and, and do things in some performance area. So wow. there's a lot of plans for growth on both campuses. Wow, that's great. Well, so with the completion of the VLC Theater, will that change at all the uses of the other theater facilities, like the Yvonne Theater? I mean, well, will they be affected? We're sure they'll be. You know, what we'll have is two theaters mm -hmm. um, for, for the both programs, the, the theater program and the, and the music theater program. But also, it will change in the faculty are working all this out because we will still be able to use the Bart Ludicky Center Theater for programs, student programs. We're actually adjusting the stage uh, and where the curtain comes down so that we can still show movies there mm -hmm. in the BLC Theater for SGA. Uh, the SEC movies have comedians do lectures. So we're, we're adjusting it so it can be both the, that part and uh, a performance area. We're, we're creating uh, usage in the, in the Yvonne Theater too. So all that's going to be worked out and there's negotiations going on about how that's going to work. In the end, I think the students will find that they have more opportunities, uh, which is the whole key. We'll yeah. have two major theaters for performance. And just think of what that'll do for us. We, we, instead of having two major productions, we'll have four. Yeah. We'll be able to have um, more musical productions, more high-tech productions. I, I think it's going to be exciting wow. for the campus. I can't wait to see that. Now, when exactly um, will the completion of the BLC Theater take place, well, exactly? Well, it's going to start this summer. Uh -huh. uh, and if uh, a conservative timeline is 18 months, so you figure a year and a half or yeah. so from the summer. Oh, uh, good. It's a conservative timeline. Things don't always go as planned, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it'll be done faster. Yeah, uh, we'll see. definitely. I'm so excited to see that. That should be really nice. Mm -hmm. Well, so the construction there for the theater in the BLC, that was paid for primarily through donations, correct? Well, donations and funds that we have um, accumulated um, through the years. It's, a, it's none, none of this is coming from tuition dollars. It's all being mm -hmm. funded externally and through things that, that we've done with fundraising and, and savings. Well, how vital are donations to life at Ryder? Well, donations are always important. Donations support the scholarships that you uh, have, as many students have, the endowed scholarships, mm -hmm. and the financial, give us the ability for financial aid to help us enhance the buildings. Uh, some of the things that you see in this theater were done by donations. So th they help us every single way. And that's the nice thing about Ryder as a private institution. You know, we, we live as a family, we, we live as a community. Mm -hmm. So when people graduate, uh, they feel a commitment to their programs and to the experiences they have to encourage it for the future students. Yeah. It's always helpful. Oh, good. Well, okay, so we've seen a lot of changes on campus with the SRC and the West Village and BLC. So are there any other uh, future changes we can look forward to on well, campus? I don't Anything know you about can let future, us in on? Future, you know, the, we have an academic building, a theater, and an academic building on the other campus are quite a bit. We are, as you know, going to open up this spring uh, in May or, or, or summer. Uh, the new turf field in the back, uh, where there is a possibility and exploration of always of having a, a, a new arena, but that's still in the very oh, wow. early, early stages. Well, that's all the time we have for this week, but I want to thank you so much. We know you're a busy guy, so thank you so much for coming to uh, spend a little time with us today. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Candid Campbell. Make sure to tune in next week. So we have some more topics we'd like to talk to with Dean Campbell. So thank you. We'll see you guys later.